Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. Today I'm going to be going over how to find the local maximum and minimum of a function, or the maximum and minimum values if there's multiple. Um, and I'm going to be showing you how to do that with this example here. So this is kind of building off of finding the increasing and decreasing intervals of a function, which I talked about a couple days ago. I'll put a link to that up here so you can check that out. Because um, that is a big part of the process for finding the local maximum and minimum. Uh, values of a function. So really when you're trying to find these local or relative maximum and minimum values, you're going to start by figuring out the increasing and the decreasing intervals just like we did in the previous video. Um, and then you're going to kind of take it a step further by applying the first derivative test essentially to figure out if each of these critical numbers within the function is a local maximum or a local minimum. So let me show you what I mean by that. Like I said, it's going to be very similar to finding increasing and decreasing intervals. The first step is going to be to find your critical numbers. The critical numbers are the places where the local maximum and minimum values may occur. So that's where you want to start. So to find the critical numbers, I have a video on that too. I'll put a link here so you can check that out if you want some more detail because I'm just going to kind of go over this a little quickly uh, until we get to the first derivative portion. But to find the critical numbers, we just need to find the derivative of our function. So to find the derivative of this function, we're going to be able to do that with just using power rule. So power rule says we'll bring the three down in front. That'll give us six X and then we'll lower the power by one, six X squared. Bring this power down in front will give us minus six X and then lowering the power by one will just leave us with an X and then minus 12. The X just kind of falls off for the derivative. So now to find the critical numbers, we need to figure out the places where f prime equals zero and we need to figure out the places where f prime does not exist. This is a polynomial. Polynomials are defined everywhere. So as a result, there are no x values where this does not exist. So all we need to do to find our critical numbers is set our derivative equal to zero and solve for x. So the first thing we can do Notice all these terms have a six in it, so we can pull a six out, factor that out. That'll just leave us with x squared minus x minus two. And then we can factor out this, uh, what's left in the parentheses here. So x squared minus x minus two would factor out to x minus two times x plus one. And to kind of double check that, negative two and positive one would add up to negative one, which is the coefficient of our x term here. And then negative two times positive one gives us negative two. So that's how we can kind of double check. So now let's just uh, kind of erase up here and move up towards the top here. To figure out where this equals zero, we can take each of these factors individually and set any of them, set each of them equal to zero and then solve each factor on its own. So first of all, we have six. 6 will never equal 0, so this won't give us any, any critical numbers. Then x minus 2, if we set that equal to 0, we can add 2 to both sides, and that'll just give us x equals 2, so that's one of our critical numbers. And then lastly, x plus 1 equals 0. We can subtract 1 from both sides, and that'll give us x equals negative 1. So x equals negative 1 and x equals 2 are the only two critical numbers for this function. So now what we want to do is figure out basically which intervals our function is increasing and decreasing and then we, we will kind of use this with the first derivative test. So all I've done here is kind of moved up the factored version of this f prime so that we can use that to figure out our intervals. And the reason why is it's going to be a little bit easier to test where our function is increasing and decreasing. So remember, when we're applying the first derivative test and figuring out the intervals where our function is increasing and decreasing, the only points that we want to put on our number line are the critical numbers. One thing that I see a lot of people do is put zero in your number line. You don't want to do that. Zero is not a critical number in this case, so you don't want to just automatically put zero in your number line. You only want the critical numbers. Of course, if zero is a critical number, you do want it there, but don't put zero on there every single time if it's not a critical number. We only want our critical numbers on our number line. So now what we can do is plug in uh, some values 
or one value from each of these three intervals, right? We have all the numbers over here, all the numbers between these two, and then all the numbers over here. We just wanna plug in one number from each of these intervals into our derivative to figure out if our function is increasing or decreasing on each of those intervals. So let's take negative two, for example, is less than negative one. That would represent this interval. So if we plug negative two into our derivative, we're gonna get a positive number for this factor. We're gonna get negative two minus negative two is a negative number for that factor. And then negative two plus one is negative one, which is still a negative number. So we're gonna get a positive number times a negative number times a negative number, which will give us a positive number. So what that means is on this interval over here, for all x values less than negative one, our function has a positive slope because the output of f prime is positive. So that means our function f is increasing for all those values. A positive slope, a positive output in your f prime just means that your function is increasing at that point. So now let's plug in some number in here. So let's say x equals zero because that's between negative one and two. We'll plug that into our f prime and figure out if f is increasing or decreasing there. So if we plug in zero, six is still gonna be a positive number. Zero minus two is gonna be a negative two. That's a negative number. And then zero plus one is positive one. So we're gonna have a positive number times a negative number times a positive number, which is gonna give us a negative number. So what that tells us is f prime is negative between x equals negative one and x equals two. So therefore the slope of f is negative which means f is decreasing, it's going down at that point. As we go from left to right, our function is gonna be going down in this interval and it's gonna be going up in this interval. Now we just need to figure out this third interval over here. Take some x value greater than two, so let's just plug in x equals three, for example. Six will still be positive. x minus two, three minus two would be positive one, that's a positive number and three plus one would be positive four. So we're gonna get a positive number times a positive number times a positive number gives us a positive slope. So f is increasing for all x is greater than two. So now what the first derivative test says is if we have a critical number where our function is increasing to the left of that critical number and it's decreasing to the right of that critical number, then this critical number will be a local max or a local maximum. So x equals negative one is a local maximum. The first derivative test also tells us if we have a critical number on our function where f is decreasing to the left of that critical number and then it's increasing to the right of that critical number, then that critical number is a local minimum or a relative minimum. So at x equals two, that critical number is a local minimum. The last thing that the first derivative tells us is if it's doing the same thing on both sides of the critical number, so we don't have an example of that in this problem, but let's just say that we had some critical number where when we drew our number line out, we got some critical number here where our function was increasing on both sides. It was increasing to the left and increasing to the right. That would not be a local maximum or a local minimum. It just means that the slope is zero there. So basically, if you had something like this, your function would be increasing and then it would flatten out at that critical number and then it would start increasing again. So this is, you could see that the slope is zero there. So it would be a critical number, but it's not a local ma maximum or a local minimum. And then same thing if it was decreasing to both sides. If it was decreasing to the left and to the right, we would get a function that would be like this, right? If we had a flat slope right here, so it was a critical number, but it was decreasing to the left and decreasing to the right, this is not a local maximum or minimum. So that's really all the first derivative test says. Um, I'll do another example of this and that video will be coming out tomorrow. So be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified when I come out with that video and you can keep getting some practice with the first derivative test.